What's up everybody, I'm Mickey and I got Ricky here with me today and we're gonna do something special. This is something we don't do around here enough. You guys always see us out here in the shop building cars, but we never really get to showcase what we drive. This is my 1995 Mazda RX-7 RZ. The fact that it's an RZ model and it's fully intact from 1995 is what makes it special. This is a very limited production car. I don't have the accurate numbers on exactly how many of these were made, but it's literally in the hundred. And um, they never came to the States. And it was never available here. Correct. This is a Japan only edition car. Right. Being a 95, this is importable. Uh, because it is over 25 years old. So what I did was, this is a car that really intrigued me and always has since I got into rotaries. So I had top rank importers actually hunt this car down in Japan, buy it on auction, ship it to the United States, specifically for the purpose of me buying it. So let's kick it off by looking at the engine bay. Not that exciting, if I'm being honest. It's a stock 13V. It's actually super exciting <laughs> because it's very rare for me to find one like this. What's cool about this car to me is that it's all here. There's some stuff on this car and you'll see as we get further into it, that's gonna get removed because I wanna make this car more original. One thing that you'll notice in here is we have a, a blow off valve over here. This is a classic HKS blow off valve and it's remote mounted, which is pretty interesting. There's an air hose that goes over here to the block and it actually moves the blow off valve away from the engine. Normally the blow off valve is pretty close it's, to the They're down there, yeah. <laughs> they usually have two, two blow off valves. Right. Yeah. This one only has a single blow off valve, which I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and just do it properly. I do like the blow off valve sound that it makes. Yeah. When you drive it, it's like part oh, of owning cool. a turbo car. It's like a rite of passage. So we'll probably put something a little more subtle. I and mean, there's a lot of hoses and sensor, sensor wiring. Yeah, just kind of floating around. They did a decent job sort of keeping it up out of the way. But to me, I really want the visual aesthetic to be very OE, very RZ. That's where this comes in. We've got the strut tower bar that was on this car from the factory. All RZ models had this as well as a couple other models. The, R the R2s came with this. Thing. Right, and so it's not necessarily that it's unique to this particular model, but it, this model has a lot of uniqueness to it, and I'll show you guys that. A lot of it's inside the car. So that's about it. It did come with this also, this uh, aftermarket Mazda Speed oil cap, which looks like a rotor, which is pretty cool. Um, this is long discontinued at this point. Will definitely be finding its way into my collection of parts and off the car. We'll go ahead and put a factory uh, oil cap back on here. But uh, I'll definitely be keeping that because it is kind of a neat little little piece to have. Lastly, like what's cool about this car is everything functions. AC, power steering. It's like it basically functions like it did when it was brand new. Before we move on to the interior, I've already started sort of ordering parts that I can find for this car. So I've ordered a new bumper cover. I've ordered new lenses is for the front lights. I ordered new headlight covers. As if you guys know FDs, you know these things become brittle and fly off at higher <laughs> speeds, which this one has already done the day I bought it. I think I've lost like four of them. Yeah, yeah. It just, the <laughs> it just, plastic gets brittle and off. the wind just rips them right off. Basically doing the Mickey spec treatment to this car, which is basically replace, repair, or refurbish pretty much everything and make it look like it did the day it came off the showroom floor. I don't know how deep we'll get, but uh, I definitely know that I've ordered all the parts to do it. When I have spare time in the evenings, I'll be working on that. So let's move on to the interior. Ricky, what's your favorite part of the interior of the RZ? Uh, easy statement is gonna be the seats. <laughs> okay, and that's same as me. I. Um, one of the reasons I ever even found out about these cars is because I found a pair of these seats on Yahoo Auction Japan. They struck me as cool because they were Kevlar back. It's a full bucket in a mid 90s car that came right. stock. This from is stock, the exactly. This, this is, is stock. not aftermarket. This is so. That's how the car came. What's really cool is that, you know, I'm gonna hop in real quick, but it, I wanna show you how it functions. Because it is OE, it has to be user friendly. So what's cool is the seat slides like a normal seat would but it also, for track days or if you're going on a road trip, you can actually just pivot the chair front to back. So instead of the backrest just folding, the whole chair goes forward or up and back, right. which I really like because I like to sit with my knees high and more like a, a lounger. And some people like to sit more upright like this and 
you can actually dial it in for your taste, which is really cool. So these seats are kind of unicorns now. They're hard to come by, and when you do, they're quite pricey. While I'm in here, I might as well talk about the rest. So it has the uh, the optional upgrade pedal set, which those are going to stay for now, but I do have some upgrades for that as well. It did come with the Cherry Blossom floor mats, which are pretty unique. And I still have that one on this side, but I'll give you guys more info on that shortly. The RZ model also came with these knee bolsters uh, on the inside here and here. So when you're at the track and you're driving, you can actually push your knees out against the door and the center console to brace yourself. So those paired with these seats make this car a dream to drive. And as you can see, already installed a doubled in CarPlay head unit in here. Got some gritty goodies in here already. Steering wheel. One piece I don't have here for you guys to see today is the Momo steering wheel that came on this RZ. It actually was here and intact. I've removed it to have it refurbished, but I think this is gonna be the, uh, the daily wheel for this car if I drive it around. What was really cool little tidbit was on the passenger side, I was cleaning up as you'll see when we get around there and the clear protective film was actually still on from 1995. Yeah, cool. So let's go over to the passenger side and check that out because there is some unique parts in here that are, you know, sort of only for the RZ. And you put that on. What? The footrest. No. I haven't seen it. This. That yes. right there? No, that's that came on the RZ and I think the Bathurst and the Spirit R. Really? So that's, that's dope. Again, we have our Recaro seat on this side. Um, and I started adding, you know, started cleaning up the interior. I added a cup holder because these cars don't have cup holders. As you can see, this one fits my throttle bottle really nice. So Throttle yeah. bottle. I can actually take my throttle bottle with me wherever I go. And it matches the car. Yeah, yeah. Pretty cool. Moving back to the exterior. The interior is... 70% there. Uh, I have all the parts already, just have to have the time to put it all in and I can't wait to finish it up. I'm really happy with the way uh, it's gonna be when it's done. But some other exterior appointments that came on the RZ was uh, this wing. Uh, I think they call this the whale tail. It's sort of like the industry yeah. term. Um, you're probably used to seeing the FD wing that kind of loops back and bolts on here in the sides. Uh, but the RZ came specifically with this wing, which is pretty cool. Um, the other thing the RZ came with was these BBS wheels. Oh yeah. As you can see, these wheels are in pretty bad shape, but they are from 95 and they're original. So we'll pull those off, get those sent out, get them refinished, gonna put them back on the car as they are. Uh, another thing that was added to this car at the dealer level was the side skirts. These are actually becoming pretty difficult to find these days. Factory urethane side skirt, pretty interesting. It's actually- Super rare. Pliable, it's not fiberglass. So bigger brakes, lighter chassis, dual oil coolers, a lot of cool things on the RZ, man. Uh, and again, this is a limited production car. They, they only made a handful versus how many production model uh, regular FDs were made. So that's pretty unique. It makes it fun to have something a little more rare and something that I can take to a meet. And people that know these cars are gonna see it right. and be like, oh, that's sick. Uh, and then the people that don't know, it's okay. They don't know. And I'm okay with that. And that's all we have for the RZ. I hope you guys are excited about it. I certainly am. I know Ricky and I are gonna have fun tinkering around with this one after hours. That's it, man. Let's move on to the next one. What's going on, guys? My name is Nick. I work for Throttle in the customer service and sales department. And this is my 2014 Subaru WRX. All right, well, Quinn and I are gonna actually go ahead and critique Nick's car today. I will say, Nick's wagon is honestly my favorite body style that they've ever made. So being that I'm not an expert on Subarus and neither is Quinn, we're gonna walk around and just point out the things that we see and that we like. Kind of give you guys an overview of what Nick has built here. So this is obviously a daily, which is pretty cool. First thing I like is this. It took, it took me like a few months to actually notice that it was there and that it wasn't faded, but it's intentional. And I like how he's got the little accents that are that colored around the car. So the lugs and the wheel Oh, it's actually the same well. color too, okay. so it's a little taste that I, I picked up immediately. I really so like what it. is that exactly? Question. What is it a picture of? The Galaxy overlay emblem. The Galaxy. Cool. Nick must be a Star Wars fan. <laughs> Galaxy far, far away. Okay, so up front, obviously, we've got a little like pseudo bash bar. I don't think it's doing any bashing, but I guess essentially this is to house the lights, driving lights, which are pretty cool, LEDs. That little diffuser down here, the factory inlet for the intercooler. And with that, that means we've got a turbocharged engine under the hood, which is pretty cool. It's always a plus, right? Makes all the cool noises. The whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I do like is that, that how it sounds, man? Something like that. I do like the yeah. paint color. It's like a pearl white. Pearl cream white. It's pearl like white. Standard white. Yeah, it has a little bit of a burnt marshmallow we look to it in, inside. But I know outside when the sun's out, it's very bright and in your face. Looks like Nick might do some riding or some snowboarding. I'm not sure. But he's got the roof rack, which is pretty cool. He is. Little flip up, flip up white bar. What? Up underneath. 
Is that custom, Nick? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm down with the light bar. I think it's cool. Definitely, you know, you can go do some back roads, spirited driving, and kick on all the lights, and we'll have an issue seeing the road, which is cool. What's neat is this is actually a Subaru optional it roof rack, nice, which I love my optional parts. As you guys know, my RX-7 is chock full of them. I love OEM upgrade parts. They fit perfect every time. They're warranted, and they're usually pretty cool. And they have logos on them, which is pretty neat, too. Other exterior mods, I see a side skirt, mud rally flaps, the quintessential Subaru over window deflectors. You have to have these in case you want to puff on your vape. You can blow the smoke out. Right, Quinn? <laughs> And you don't get wet. Now let's go back here. I see some Federal sticky tires and some T37 style wheels, stock brakes. But we know the brakes on the Subies are pretty good. All the ones we've had have been pretty solid. This is this is the throttle brain wing. That's what that is. This is your favorite That's part of this car, huh? Probably, yeah. Out of the exhaust. I like the fact that it's all carbon because I know these were available in carbon and fiberglass. Exhaust Nick got ones. the only carbon one. So that's a perk of working here at Throttle. He got the dibs on this and uh, I think it was a smart move because he doesn't have to take it off of the paint shop, which is cool. And with his car being white, the best color for cars in my opinion, fits right in. Are these aftermarket taillights? Sure. Spider taillights that he bought from himself off throttle.com, which is pretty cool. So we got a wing, taillights, burnt tips, custom exhaust, which is cool. I'm sure it's a cat back because it has to be here in California. And Nick is not a law-breaking citizen. I do know it sounds cool because I hear him leave for work every day and I hear it. Added a reverse camera, that's a nice touch. Gotta have the mud flaps. All rally right. armor. Every Subaru guy has to have his rally armors or rock blocks. I'm a big fan of the rock blocks because they hooked us up fat on the GC8. And that, those products are really nice. Yeah. I also see a throttle shift knob inside and he carried the Galaxy theme. Yes, oh, and the shifter. I do like that, yeah. Oh, purple, purple, look at those seats though. Man, Subaru does do a nice job. I think they work with Ricardo or somebody because the seats are always pretty lush in these cars. Thank Not you. as cool as say a set in an RZ. With Kevlar. Not everything can be a factory race car, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? They put those seats in a heap of cars. Yeah. So that's cool because they're readily available on the aftermarket, I'm sure. They fit great. We did have them in one of our previous sweepstakes cars, so good stuff. All in all, I like to look at this car. I love white cars. I know you do too, Quinn. So uh, this one's near and dear to our heart with the black and white theme. Are these vents stock on the side? Yeah. So I don't know, really. Pretty aggressive. Subaru does a lot of little neat tricks. I think just because of the history of rally and world rally cross and all our world rally championship and all that stuff, they implement a lot of that stuff into the stock body, especially on the higher end sports models that they build, which I, I applaud that. I think it's really cool. I do see one problem with this car that I really don't like, and it's that he put his VIP sticker on the wrong side. I think that's it's supposed like to be on the driver's side. Well, in Japan, that's, that is the driver's yeah, side. Yeah, but we're not in Japan, dog. <laughs> I'm just giving Nick a hard time. It's nice to see a throttle VIP sticker. We see those on the road frequently now as that program has grown so much. We see them around and uh, I even got noticed at the gas station with my throttle VIP sticker a couple weeks ago. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, so that's it. I think, uh, you know, he's put together a pretty tidy little car here. It's actually really tastefully put together. This side skirt, splitter, front splitter all comes together. Love the pearl white as we mentioned. Pretty I'm sure cool. It's a, I'm sure it's a blast to drive every day. Oh. Just looks good, sounds good, works all the time. AC, heater, Does it go stereo. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Got the turbo stuff on there. Yeah, awesome. Love it. All right, well, that's a wrap on Nick's 2014 Subaru WRX. Let's move on to the next one. Next up is actually me. This is my car. She is my daily driver. She is a 1997 E36 BMW M3. Four door. I bought it four years ago, 4,500 bucks, and I've been dealing it everywhere. Fantastic little car. I got it so cheap because it was super bone stock and it was an automatic transmission car. Obviously, I've done some stuff to it since then, and one of the things I did was a manual conversion, so it is no longer automatic. Stance, made it look good, excellent nail. Clearly, it's a white BMW, so I'm a fan. I'm not a huge BMW guy, but it is white, so that makes me very happy. I've ridden this car quite a few times. One of the first things I noticed about Quinn's BMW when I first met him was how low he has the rear set. 
very DTM style, which I like. It's not for everybody, I don't think. A lot of people want a flush fitment with stretch tire when they run their car that low, but Quinn, more like me, he's a function guy, so this is actually cool. It's neat to see this thing going down the freeway. It doesn't rub at all with us loaded in it. I think he nailed it with the, the wheel fitment and tire fitment. It looks the part. I do like the rear wing. I like the roof wing. That's very JDM-ish, so that's pretty cool. It's a little flavor. And uh, I'm a little, little suspect on the oil cooler lines down here. But he says there's a reason for it. I think it's maybe to keep this thing from leaking oil. I'm not sure. <laughs> you can't, you can't stop. BMW from leaking oil. When yeah. BMW oil light comes on, that means you have, just have to add more oil. This is actually just water. He just washed the car, so I'm just kidding. This doesn't leak oil at all. In fact, Quinn's car, it does have a little bit of moisture underneath, but I've seen a lot it, worse it BMWs. Does. Yeah, so. I need to really pull this car apart and go through. I've done all the basic maintenance stuff as far as I can without ripping the motor and yeah. going through. So like chains, but pan gaskets, stuff like that. To I reiterate, do. you do drive this every day. Uh, this is my, so, yeah. So this isn't, a, this isn't a lift queen yeah. that gets cleaned yeah. underneath. And so that was kind of the, the pick and taste mods that I did were really to kind of have a fun car and make it nice and make it enjoyable to drive, but really not rip too much into the car. So the manual swap was the biggest thing I've done to this. Aside from that, like uh, the BC coilovers, this car is static. So it's just little things like the lip and the wing and the steering wheel and the set of wheels and, you know, strut bracing and sway bars and all that See, stuff. But that's why fun. M3s, you don't really have to do a lot to make them really cool. I like the yeah. sedan. I, I've never owned an M3 sedan, but I really like this one. And then what BBS are these? Is this a these, are, these are BBS RX. Actually, they're 18 okay. by 8 and then I got the Falcon RT660s. Absolute monster of a tire. Yeah. On all four. <laughs> Yeah. A little grip animal. I like this yeah. little this little gift I gave you. Wow. Yeah, that was that was that was Mr. Becker. Little M Sport parts, little uh, LTW inspired badge there, and then uh, oh, let me open this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave now because I know nothing about these cars. So take it away, Ev. <laughs> Looks like you need some Vaders, dog. Yeah, I do. This car's a little worse for it. It's got 230,000 miles. I put 65,000 miles on this car since I bought it. So yeah. some of some of the like the paint and the seats and stuff is starting to show its age a little bit more but than it honestly, was when I initially got it. Like you have, first of all, you have door panels that are on. The all interior, the windows work. All the, the windows work. The interior is really clean, minus this seat. Really? Yeah. You know, even like the back seats are clean. And that's really not that common. Like when I bought my car, it was just trash. trash. Like yeah. totally trash. Headliner was sagging in mine. This one looks. Oh, it's sagging it's, a little it's bit. It's sagging a little bit. The sunroof helps. If you okay. got a slick top, it sags way more. But. The airbag. It, it, it has a clean dash. There are no lights on on this Clean car. dash in the, the glove box sag you don't have? No. Not really? Minimal, no. very minimal. Yeah, I'm it's, it's, it's been a good nice. car. Black roof. This is something unique. Is it, where, where did this come from? So that is from Street Track Life. They're a British company. They make okay. a whole kind of a little bit of a Bosuzoku style drift kit. And one of the pieces that I liked was the roof spoiler, but it was a little bit too angled up for me. So I bought it and actually modified it to make it sit more kind of straight. So it's an aftermarket modified, kind of a JDM style thing. Again with the so you got a one well. piece LTW style wing. So that wing actually came with the car. It was two piece. It was one of the worst LTW wings I've ever seen. So I spent uh, like I've a year. No, I've mine seen, was worse, no, no. dude. I've, I spent an entire calendar year refurbishing this. It looks good. Remounting it, Bondo, making it one piece, making, making one it work. Piece. Throttle, uh, throttle plate right there. Little Ooh, license plate, beauty. frame. You have an exhaust on here? Yeah, it is a Borla cat. Okay. Brakes, stock, stock, stock cats. Brakes. Yeah, I mean, mostly stock. You don't see this very often. The rain guards, I love the rain guards. You cannot get them on a coupe because, as you know, it's a frameless. Yeah. Frameless, but the sedans, they have the whole frame. So the coupe doors end here, and every time you open it, the window sinks down a little bit. The sedans are full frame, which means you can have rain guards on them, which is nice. Onto the hood, this is a what year car? Uh, 97, so it's a S52. S52, same motor that I have in my car. And if you've never driven an M3, like if you've driven an E36 non-M, kind of boring and plain, and these cars, the M version is so much better. It's like night and day better than a regular E36 chassis. They are extremely punchy, and the top end is, is really nice on them. And the M3s get better brakes, better suspension components, um, better engine, obviously, better interior, like it's, it's a way better car. I know they're really getting really expensive now. You paid forty five hundred. I paid forty five. You would not find this. 
Yeah. I paid twenty three hundred dollars for my yeah. car. It had a blown head gasket at the time, but but yeah, you cannot find them for that cheap. If anyone's got the lead on something, let me know because yeah, always in the market they're for going for like twenties to thirties. Yeah. It's insane. So any future plans? Anything? I mean, this is your daily. Uh, but... Really? Not really. I mean, there's some minor maintenance things I need to do to it, but for now, it's still the daily. So I don't want to really start ramping anything crazy up for this car. Oh, but yeah, this car is super clean, pretty sick daily. I would not mind dailying this car for sure if it was mine and it's only going up in value so you can't really argue about that i love it she's a great car so i think that is that it that's, anything that's else about it yeah all right well this is kind of a new series that we're kind of testing out if you like this style of video if you want to meet more of the throttle team and see more cars that you don't really see on the throttle youtube channel please be vocal in the comment section below so we're going to use that as kind of our barometer to see if this type of content is something you guys want to see more of on our youtube channel so we've got a lot of employees here at throttle just about 20 as of right now so there's a lot of cars that you haven't seen so please as i said please be vocal thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one later